Hey everybody, this is Rafael Valentino. Welcome to my first of hopefully many video tutorial sessions. Um, if this goes well, you guys have questions, please feel free to ask. And um, I'm going to give you a couple of pointers and a couple of tutorials uh, on what I think is important, stuff that would have helped me out years ago when I was starting out using Ableton. This tutorial is going to be super simple. It's going to be almost an intro to Ableton Live. Um, the cool thing is Ableton Live 9 did just come out today, officially. Uh, it's March 5th. Well, technically it's March 6th. But uh, I just got back from New York right now. We had a uh, Ableton Live meetup um, on TechServe. It was hosted at TechServe in New York. And uh, they, Ableton came by. They brought Ableton push controllers. We used it with Ableton 9. So if you own Ableton Live 8 and you, uh, you want to buy push, you do need Ableton Live 9. Uh, I'm almost positive of that and they added a couple of new features like automation in both the session and the arrangement view um, if you don't own Ableton at all you can get push and the live 9 suite for 1198 uh, and it'll save you almost $200 there um, Ableton live 9 intro will also work with push uh, but you're a little inter little limited to what you could do uh, if you want to know exactly what you're going to get, I would definitely suggest going to Ableton.com and then just kind of going to, you know, what features are included in the intro standard and suite, just so at least you know a little bit more about this. So moving along, um, the first thing I want to show you guys is not even Ableton at all. Um, I have a couple of songs in this folder uh, called sample songs of just songs that I downloaded from Bport. And the one thing that I do uh, when I make any mix or mashup or mix show, I try to stay in the same key, and for that, I strongly suggest that you guys pick up a copy of Mixed In Key. It's around $60, and they made a bunch of improvements from previous versions of this program. This is Mixed In Key 5. They actually added an energy column, which is going to try to detect the buildups and tell you exactly how um, what the energy of the song is, so you kind of have some ideas on you know where in your set you want to put them or where in your mix show so right now I'm not gonna go too in-depth in mixed in key if you guys really want to know um, a little bit more about mixed in key and harmonic mixing and how this works and just the idea behind it let me know and I'll make a totally separate video um, but for now the basics are just dragging all the songs you know all the songs you have inside of the folder and I've already done this so it knows exactly the key, the tempo, the energy. Um, it separates the artist and the name of the track. So right now, this actually took on my machine. I'm running an i7, uh, three point. I think I'm overclocking it at three point nine. Um, Sixteen gigs of RAM, solid state hard drives. This took about a minute and a half. So just to kind of give you a little gauge, um, this is pretty quick to do, and it's. It's an exceptional program, and I think it's kind of mandatory if you want your mixes to sound totally organic, um, because you can beat match as much as you want, but if your songs aren't in key, the mix just may not sound right. So I'm not going to go too in-depth, but basically you have a clock that the Camelot wheel is based on, and if your song is basically keyed at 12B, uh, which is like the 12 o'clock right here, you can move up or down or you can move left or right. So if your song is in 12B, you can move to 11B, and then 10B, then 10A, 11A, 11B, 10B, 9B, so on and so forth. So um, you can go to mixedinkey.com, get yourself a little bit more info on harmonic mixing and how it works and why it works, and uh, we're not gonna go too much more into that. So right now, we're just gonna use two tracks that are both at 8A, so they're in the same exact key. Um, Tubenberger and Fatboy Slim's tracks uh, on Bport that were just released a couple of weeks ago. Or actually, they were just on the top 10 a couple of weeks ago, so um, I have them right here. I isolated them and put them in a folder called Tutorial. So we only have those two tracks that we know are in 8A. Okay, so let's close Mixed In Key. We have our folder Tutorial with the two songs that we know are in key. And let's go ahead and open up Live and start. Now, even if I'm using Ableton Live 9 Suite, this tutorial totally applies to Ableton Live 8, Ableton Live 8 Intro, uh, the standard, 9, even 7s, 
I mean, it's it's um, totally universal. We're not doing anything special. We're not using any crazy features that are introduced in nine. So this is pretty much exactly what you're going to be accustomed to seeing. You have an arrangement view and you have a session view. So for doing my mix shows and you know doing my productions and everything, 90% of the time, unless you're performing, um, you're going to use your arrangement view. We don't need these MIDI tracks for now. Uh, we're basically taking two songs, two audio tracks, and we're going to use them. So we can drag them right from the folder itself from sample songs, which is open right over here. And we can just drag these in. So given that it's the first time I'm dragging this track in, it's going to go ahead and try to detect the warp markers for me. And you see anytime Ableton looks like this, um, you know you have a little bit of work to do. So just for good housekeeping, what I do is since this is omitted by Ableton right now and it's start of the track here, we see this as omitted, so that's not good. The first thing we wanna do is right click on the first beat that we can see, set it to 1.1.1. Now, the global the global tempo right here is set to 120. We see the track over here is 121, 120. It's actually gonna be 122 I'm looking at right now, just because if we get rid of these, you can start to see how this beat should be here and we're starting to get closer to 122. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this as 1.1.1. I'm going to put the global tempo at 122 because we're going to try to match the tempo of the original track if we don't know it. And then from here, we can right click and say warp 122 from here. And it's going to go ahead and warp the entire track at 122. Now, when you see a nice little kick or a bass line that's running here, we can try to match it up to the actual solid number. And if we scrub through, we can just do this just kind of roughly we see over here it's starting to fade out so I go ahead and bring that back double click to anchor move along the track moving along it's gonna drop again right here and this is actually pretty spot-on because we see over here the last anchor point we put brought the track to 122 and if we go to the end of the track it's pretty perfect now if you're gonna use the track more than once I would strongly suggest you click save and this is basically going to save all the um, the elastic time code, the warp markers. Um, it's going to save all the information if you um, whatever whatever you're doing mechanically to the track right now. You don't have to repeat it two, three, four, five times if you're using this track multiple times. So always get in the habit of after you're done and you're happy with warping the entire track, click save. So the next time you drag it in, the warp markers stay. Now, uh, for some reason, the clips deactivated. And I don't know why it does that, but if I delete it, now we see the ASD files in here. If I bring it back in, it's there. I submitted this as a bug and hopefully it gets fixed soon. All right, good. So it's got a good sound. Now I do a lot of my stuff for radio and there's a lot of hardware compression that goes into it, especially when you're trying to compress two, tr when, you're I'm sorry, when you're trying to mix two tracks together the transition, you might start clipping. You're going to lose a couple of frequencies. So bring up the master and always try to keep a keen eye over here. Make sure it's not clipping. It's not going in the red. Um, it's right up against the threshold. So you know that when you do drop the second track, it's going to kind of peak. So for this tutorial, we're just going to do something simple and just go minus three. We're going to set the volume, the track volume of the second track to minus three as well. And we're not going to get creative with the middle of the track. I'm just going to show you exactly how to drop another song when our kick leaves at 2.13, right over here. So if you listen. This is an easy example because we don't have kicks that are conflicting. We don't have any competing frequencies. Um, our second track is going to sound clean going in. I know that ahead of time just because uh, all we have is a strum over here for a guitar. It's actually an organ, not a guitar. Um, so let's go ahead, bring this track in. We're going to do the same exact job we did last time. It's going to go ahead and analyze the entire track. Hopefully it loads the waveform on the timeline. Let's see. Perfect. Okay, let's go to the beginning. Looks good. 
It's at 123.99, which is safe to say the track is at 124. Another dead giveaway is that it didn't put a thousand warp markers. If a track has a really, really clear percussion track behind it, you're, you're, it's not going to mess up as much as if there's a breakdown or an acapella um, in the middle of the track. Um, it's just going to be better at detecting that. So if we drag this, we just saw the segment BPM go to 124.01. If we scrub through, this is another good point we could take. Move it in, 124 on the dot. So that's good. We click save. Now we want to bring the track in right over here and we'll see how that goes. That sounds really good, but track pretty much there's no movement until the build up right over here. Okay, so I know this is the part of the song that I actually want to take in, so I have a lot of keyboard shortcuts, you guys are going to be able to see them in the video, and Command E on a Mac, or Control E on a Windows PC is the shortcut to split a track at the playhead, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this part, I'm going to paste it where I think this track ends. <laughs> If I paste it here, it's it's destructive. It's not like Logic where it's going to go in front. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to drag. See how your icons change? You can either drag to the right from this section or drag to the left from this section when the bracket is open in the corresponding respective directions over here. So we're going to go ahead and bring this all the way back over here. Now this should still be clipping in the master. So if we keep an eye out for the master volume over here. It is. So we're going to basically click on the track volume envelope, which was created when we clicked on the track volumes. And we're going to go ahead and drag down a tad. We're going to bring these to minus eight. And we're going to probably kill it a little bit as soon as it gets, as soon as we introduce the track. So we can bring this to maybe minus five. Let's go back, play it, let's hear how it sounds. And then just to give it a little more movement, we can bring this down a little bit to minus six. Holding the uh, command button will uh, make the increments in your envelope shorter, more precise. That helped me out. It took me a while to figure that out. Make this at six. Have this gradually lower over time. Okay, so playing this back, this should be close to perfect. I'm not going to add any effects or any reverbs to try to mask any um any mixing or anything like that so let's see how this sounds That sounded pretty good, considering uh, we did that in about five minutes. So I'm Rafael Valentino. I hope you guys enjoyed this first of hopefully many video tutorials. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, please drop me a line. Uh, leave a comment in the video section. I'm going to leave my website, my email, SoundCloud, Facebook, Twitter in the video description. Feel free to check it out. Um, subscribe to the videos, and I will see you guys next time.